what's your take on the session today? As David said, we did see a nice jump up in those iron ore stocks and perhaps a little less panic surrounding uh, where that commodity is headed. Okay, there was an overwhelmingly positive day, up by 0.8% when we saw the US market only up by 0.3% overnight and the Shanghai Composite negative during the session. If we have a look at uh, the gains across the market, for every five stocks that gained, we only saw three stocks falling, so overwhelmingly positive there. But in the top 20, it was really the financial stocks which outperformed. If we have a look at the top performing stocks in the blue chip area, they were the likes of AMP, Suncorp, Metway, QBE Insurance, followed by the bank. CBA, Westpac, as well as NAB. So altogether, it was the financial stocks which really helped our index up by 0.8%, although we did see some very impressive performances in the material space as well. Where you didn't want to be today was the, was the staples, utilities, and the information technology space. So very much risk on where investors were willing to take on a bit more risk, even though there was a tilt towards those financials, but certainly there was a shift out of those defensive areas of staples, utilities, and information technology. We saw some 52-week highs today. Oil Search was one of them, IINet, New Farm, as well as Sonic Healthcare. And often we forget about the New Zealand stocks which are listed on the Aussie share market, but they had an extremely positive day. We saw the likes of Fisher & Paykel, a tower, as well as Nuplex hitting 52-week highs on the Aussie share market today. But all eyes on tonight, that German constitutional ruling, and then tomorrow where we'll see Ben Bernanke's speech and expectations of more easy money. Your coat tonight, you flagged it earlier. Now, we know that the markets are largely expecting this to go through, but there is some risk that the conditions could be draconian. And, and could this present a bit of a nasty surprise for the markets? It certainly could, and we are watching the details here. We're watching to see uh, whether this vote goes through and the conditions imposed. And this will give us some insight into what the Germans are willing to accept. And if we have a look at the European stability mechanism, if this is um, to ratify that ESM. In terms of that ESM, we need around about 90% of those countries that con contribute uh, to that ESM to ratify for this to go through. And of course, the Germans contribute almost 30% to that European stability mechanism. So it is an important vote tonight. But a lot of market watchers are going to be looking to see uh, to see how much the Germans are really willing to back the euro and I guess uh, spend in terms of protecting the euro. We have a look at where this problem all stems from. Of course, it's the debt problems of the eurozone where we have seen unsustainable levels of debt uh, by the likes of Greece, Portugal, Italy and Ireland. And if we have a look at uh, the problems, part, some of those countries are dealing with high levels of government debt, uh, such as the likes of Greece and Italy, and other areas are looking at high levels of private sector debt, like Ireland um, as well as Spain, and then Portugal, you've got high levels of both uh, private and uh, government sector debt. So altogether, those uh, debt problems really what's very much in focus and hopefully a mechanism which deals with uh, the, the, the fallout as well as uh, protects the euro. So the market's going to be watching this one very closely and then, of course, followed by the FOMC meeting. It's an absolutely monster week. Yeah,